Today we are looking at um, Psalms 47. Psalms 47 is another psalm about the end time. Um, and like I have said before, when a, um, an individual is playing on, on Broadway and he's playing a character or a role on Broadway, when the play is over, um, he then begins to start to disentangle himself from the role that he was playing and become who he really is. And that's what's going to happen with us. We are, we are now uh, playing in a role of, 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 that was given to us by our sinful uh, um, creation. In other words, we were born in sin, shaped in iniquity. So we're born that way. But the beauty of it is that God says that we, were, that, that we didn't know him are born again. <coughs> Excuse me. And when you're born again, that born again nature or that born again personality is your true and eternal personality. That's who you really are. Now, we still have to go through the stages and we still have to go through the, the formalities of dealing with this world that we're in. We have to wait until the stage is shut down, until the play is over. And that happens when the Lord says it's happened. He will tell us when it's time to turn off the lights, stop the play, and you can now go into the real you, the, re the you that I have uh, embodied and created in you. He said, I will create in you a new thing. And we have in us a new nature that we will deal with and handle and experience and, and live with and enjoy for eternity. All right? So it's important for us to keep that in mind. And there are many uh, uh, passages of scriptures that we could go to, but I decided that I'm just going to go and just stick with what we are dealing with. And, uh, uh, and I just kind of refer to some of the passages as we go along, all right, rather than having us turn to them today. So uh, let's go ahead and start our reading. Our reading is uh, Psalms 47. Let's go ahead and take a listen. Psalm 47. Oh, clap your hands, all ye people. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. For the Lord Most High is terrible. He is a great king over all the earth. He shall subdue the people under us and the nations under our feet. He shall choose our inheritance for us, the excellency of Jacob, whom he loved, Selah. God is gone up with a shout, the Lord with the sound of a trumpet. Sing praises to God, sing praises, sing praises unto our king, sing praises. For God is the king of all the earth, sing ye praises with understanding. God reigneth over the heathen, God sitteth upon the throne of his holiness. The princes of the people are gathered together, even the people of the God of Abraham. For the shields of the earth belong unto God. He is greatly exalted. All right. Now, as you can see, very short psalm. Doesn't uh, uh, have a whole lot uh, to it, but it says a lot. Only nine verses. But when you think about what it is that's happening, remember, we want to look at the psalms we, look, we, we had already looked at, and we looked at some psalms that talk about uh, God coming and establishing his kingdom, and that's exactly what we see here. Um, it's dealing with the end result. Now, I use the analogy of uh, a Broadway play or school play, and when it's all finished, what usually happens when the play is finished and the last line is said and the, and the characters are done and they begin to bow? What, what, are the, what's, what happens? The audience is what? Clapping. They're, they're, they're showing appreciation. All right? and, and that is just something that you do to say, well played. You did a good job. I'm, I'm happy and, and, and satisfied with what I, with what I experienced. Well, look at how Psalms 47 opens up. It says, it says, oh, clap your hands. Why are we clapping our hands? Because we're, we're happy and joyful for what we've experienced. Nobody that loved the Lord that's going to enter into eternity is going to look back on their life and go, I still think I got a raw deal. No, nobody's going to say that. Everybody is going to be rejoicing. Everybody is going to be glad. I'm talking about everybody that loves the Lord and knows the Lord and has been born again. He says, clap your hands. 
Who? Who's clapping? All ye people. All right, and it's important. It didn't say everybody, but ye people. So we got to understand what the ye people is. Sometimes we get, you know, uh, in our modern day vernacular, we kind of get offended when somebody says you people. <laughs> like, well, what do you mean you people? Well, ye people uh, is also speaking once again about a certain group. And that speaks to those that know God. So I don't mind being called ye people. Because I, that identifies me, like the psalmist here, as those that have been called and set aside by the grace and the love and the death and burial and resurrection of Jesus Christ. You can call me ye people all day long. I'm okay with that. Why? Clap your hands, ye people. Shout unto the Lord. All right. So we're going to shout. All right. Why are we shouting? Shouting for what? What does shouting do? Shouting, a lot of times, is a sense of unrestrained, the, un, the inability to um, hold in the amount of expressive joy that you have. And, you, and, and you're shouting. And remember, this is a shout of joy. Shouting can have a positive and a negative. Because when you start seeing something really disastrous happen, and your voice is going to go up quick because you want to be heard and your emotions are thrusting through. Well, it's the same thing with joy. When you're having that, 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 uh, that feeling of joy, and it's to the point to where you're just shouting. You know, um, <clears throat> our bodies are made, and, and, and you know, the scripture says we are, we are uh, uh, marvelously and miraculously made. I find it interesting. When somebody tells you something, that is absolutely funny. I mean, to the point where it's like you get it and you get it and it's like it hits the funny bone. You can't help yourself. And there's nothing worse than being in a place where you're not supposed to be laughing and you see something funny. That's hard. You know, when you were in school, remember that? Well, when you were in, you going into a, a church or or Lord help, don't let nothing funny happen when you're at somebody's funeral or somebody's wedding and you start giggling and laughing. That's out of place. But it's hard to contain it. That's how our bodies are made. So when we get those those things that hit us in a certain way, we shout. The, the voice opens up. The conversation begins to happen as far as the, your expression. And it doesn't have to be a conversation of intelligible words. It can be a conversation of utterances. And so when people are laughing, you don't you don't hear words and sentences. You hear the ha ha ha. You know, you know you you hear that, and you and the same thing when you are just shouting for joy. You just you know you hear the hooray or the yay or the you know, you hear these utterances. Why? Because what's in you cannot be contained, and that's what this is trying to talk about. There's going to be a spontaneous eruption of joy. Now, <clears throat> when I see this, it helps me to understand that it's going to be worth it. These are the kind of psalms that you can go to when you're feeling like, I don't know if it's worth it. No, it's worth it. This is going to, this is going to be fulfilled. You, as a child of God, will do this. It's talking about you. Who? Yeah, all ye, all ye people. This is what this is a prophecy about us. This is what we're going to do. Let's keep going. We're going to be clapping. It says, "Clap your hands, all ye people. Shout unto God with the voice uh, of trumpets." All right. So it's going to be a shout. That is a trumpet like. In other words, there will be a a, a, a melody or a music aspect. Um, we talk about how uh, the uh, the angels have this music uh, uh, ability built into them. Uh, even about, even when it gives description of the fallen angel Lucifer, it talks about in him were produced pipes, and we think about pipes like the pipes of an organ and things of that nature in him. But even in the human being, we have the ability to make music. We have pipes. What kind of pipes do we have? We have lungs, airways. Uh, and the ability to make all kinds of, 
of, of sounds and vocal uh, 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 tonages that can be uh, described as melody and harmony. And so when it talks about that trumpet, it's talking about you're going to use that ability. So once again, you look at something that is, you know, that people go to. People pay to see other people sing. People pay money and will sit for hours to watch somebody that's got talent sing. Well, when we get into eternity, everybody's going to have talent. I don't care if you can't carry a note now. You're going to be able to carry it in. You're going to sound like a trumpet. You're going to have that ability. Look at verse 2. For the Lord most high is terrible. Now, that's something we have to make sure that we, we, we break down. First of all, it says, for the Lord. We already uh, uh, have consistently, and I will continue to express the importance of the word Lord. All right? That means that you have found God's ways to be better than your ways, and you decided to follow him. That's the only reason you call him Lord. When you have surrendered your way to his way. Jesus said, why call ye me Lord, Lord, and don't do what I say? If you're going to call him Lord, that means you agree that his way is the way no matter how I see it. So it says, for the Lord most high. All right. So when you start talking about the Lord most high, now you're talking about the God of God. So no matter what it is that people will try to exalt, worship, put on a pedestal, there's nothing that can reach the levels of God. That's the, that's, that's the, uh, uh, the problem or, or the error that Satan made. Satan... Uh, vastly underestimated the ability and the depthness and the greatness of God. You can't trick him. You can't uh, uh, manipulate God. You can't catch God off guard. Why? Because he's most high. And so when Satan, in his cleverness, because he was a clever angel, thought he found weakness in God, it only turned into something that produced something even greater. One of the things it produced was our ability to be grafted in to what God is doing. How are we grafted in? We're grafted in by the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus to become the bride of Christ. We've now become part of his household. What happens when a, when a, a, a husband traditionally marries the bride? Where does the bride go to live? The bride goes to live with the what? With the husband. They come to, into unity together. And because of what Satan did, we human beings now have a have a have an opportunity to be called alongside God himself as his bride, as the church. That's not how we were initially made. We were initially made from the what? From the dust of the earth. And so with all he did and and if we can go into a whole lot of reasons for what his motives were um but we'll probably save that for another another uh, lesson but the end result was that he didn't get what he wanted he wanted to be uh i'm gonna rise up to be like the most high he didn't get it but guess who got it the people that were made out of dirt satan's made out of jewels and gold and and, 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 and gems. And when you read the description of him in Isaiah and in Ezekiel, it talks about his creation from the uh, um, sapphire and the, and, the, and the carbuncle and the emerald. But man was made from the dust of the earth. And so Satan was, well, if anybody should be up with the most high, it should be him. Nope. The first shall be last and the last shall be first. We that were made out of dust now get to be part of the bride. So we got, that's why we get to shout. That's why we get to, to blow our trumpets and to, and to shout for joy. Why? Because the Lord Most High is terrible. He did something that, that Satan could not figure out. And for those that try to oppose him, they're going to find out this is not good. I thought I could trick God. No, you couldn't. God is more mysterious and he's deeper and he has more ability to understand the ancients 
of reality and what makes up truth more so than any being that has ever he because he's not any being that can be created he is the always existing god that's why jesus said when he talked to pontius pilate he said for this reason came i into the world that i may bear witness to the what to the truth why because there are things that are so extraordinarily uh uh uh, uh, uh deep but yet true to the point to where uh people were looking they were confused even even his disciples were like well are you now going to restore and he would tell them it's not for you to know the the time the day or the hour and why was he telling them that because he's letting us know that god has it figured out but it won't make sense to you and man is that true there's a lot of things that God does that don't make sense to me. You know, when I see things happening to, to good people or decent people or how I see it, or, you know, when you see all the stuff that we, we can't add it up and you say, well, why is that happening? And I have to say, you know, I, honestly, I don't, I don't know. Why? Because that's the mysterious, that's that terrible aspect, that deepness about what God is. And it's, 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 it's extraordinarily deep and, and mind blowing to understand that he has realms and ways. That's why I just got to go by faith and I have to let him lead. I have to trust my Lord who I'm going to listen to by faith. And that's not always easy to do because sometimes you get confused and you get mad and you get scared because things are moved. This is, 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 is this bad thing about to happen. Is this, is this, I got to learn to trust God. And it's not always easy. But verse 1 already told us if we do trust God, we're going to be shouting and, 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 and clapping and singing and praising God. All right? Because he's just that mysterious. He's just that terrible. He's just that great. It goes on. It says, he is the great king over all the earth. Now, that right there is another, another scripture we could have went to where Jesus said, how to pray when his disciples said teach us how to pray and he said after this manner our father which art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy will be done thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven All right so god's will is already being done in heaven it is not happening here on earth not not this moment as we speak not in the sense of it happening in all aspects. Um, when we get to this point where we're clapping and rejoicing and singing, that's when we will begin to recognize God's will is now being done on earth. On, on what part of earth? On all earth. So it's, he says, he is the great, he is a great king over all the earth. Right now, Satan is the prince and power of the air he's the ruler of this world currently as we speak that's not going to always be this is once again a prophetic aspect of where we're going we're going to this we're not there yet but this is where we're headed let's keep going verse 3 he shall subdue the people under us and the nations under his feet all right when he comes to take over the earth, right now, who's running the earth? We already talked about from a spiritual aspect, it is Satan. But from a political and a structural concept, we see the rulers and the kings of this nation, of the nations of the world. We see right now Russia's doing what it wants to do. The United States got its power. China has its power. Right? Great Britain uh, has their ability to do certain things and all these other nations have their authority and their, their ability to do. And there's certain little aspects of the world that they control and have uh, a, a greater or a lesser uh, a power over. But that's not going to always be. When God's will is done on earth, as it is in heaven, he's going to subdue. In other words, he's going to take over. 
I'm going to come and I'm going to take over. I'm going to reclaim ownership of the people. Well, I'm, a, I'm an American citizen. It don't matter. I'm a citizen of, the, of Great Britain. It don't matter. When the Lord comes, guess what, guess what authority you're going to be under? His authority. You can say, well, that's not, he's breaking my constitutional rights. I have a constitution. I got a constitutional right. No, I, can, I, can I get my phone call? You're not getting no phone call, no constitutional rights. You know, you know I want a lawyer. None of that's going to happen. He's coming and he's going to subdue the people and the nations. The nation's going to be like, oh, we're going to code red. We're going to get all of our missiles ready. We're going to get all of our, our, our nuclear and, and, and armaments. We're going to get the military. We're going to get the Navy. We're going to get the Marines. We're going to get, you know, we're going to get the Green Berets. It don't matter. He's going to subdue all the nations. See, this is why we're going to be clapping. This is why we're going to be shouting. Because we're going to see, man's going to try to do all he can do. He's going to try to flex all, and God's going to shut all that down. And like we would do when you see a play when the good guy finally wins and everybody's clapping, man, we're going to be like, oh, thank you, Lord. Oh, God, thank you. Yes. Ooh, look at them trying to do and look. Yes. And we're going to be shouting, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, when you're watching the game and your team's coming back, you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, everybody's going to be losing their mind at how great God is. It's going to be just a wonderful experience for those that love God. All right. Look at verse 4. He shall choose our inheritance for us. See? You're not going to walk out of this empty-handed. You're going home with something. You go to a game and your team won and you got your, you know how you get the little foam thing with the little hand on it that says, we're number one. You got your shirt, the hat, you got your little goodie bags that you got. You know, even the popcorn that you buy tastes a lot better when your team wins. You know, and you go on out there, you got your stuff. Where did you get? I got that from the game. I was I was at the game. You were there at the game. Yeah, I was there, man. I saw the play. I was right there. I saw the whole thing happen. Well, we're going to have our inheritance, our evidence that we are part of what God was doing. And we're going to receive that. He shall choose our inheritance for us. Now, here's the wonderful thing. He's going to give you what you need. He's going to give you what he wants you to have. It's a gift from God. You, you, know, can you, you know, you're sitting there at the game, and at the end of the game, Jordan walks up to you and hands you his sneakers. You're like, what? Jordan gave me his sneakers? Oh, my goodness. You know, and he gives them to you. Well, guess what? When God gives you your inheritance, it's going to be exactly what you need. And what you want is going to fulfill every desire and longing that you have because it's your inheritance that's been bought and paid for by Jesus Christ. He's going to give you your inheritance. Uh, the excellency of Jacob, whom he loved, Selah. Selah means pause, slow down, think about it. Well, it's pause, slow down, and think about what? That he's choosing our inheritance. For us, the excellency of Jacob, whom he loved. All right, we already talked about it. Every time you see the word Jacob, what do you think about? What does it mean? He could have used the excellency of Israel. He didn't use that name. He used the excellency of Jacob. What does that mean? He's choosing the excellency of those that are imperfect. What does Jacob mean? Trickster, hail, uh, a, a heel catcher, a wrestler with God. Those that struggle. Why? Because we do struggle. Every day sometimes we wake up and we wrestle with God. God, why, is, why do I got to go through this? Why does this have to happen? We're wrestling with God every day. Why? Because that's what Jacob does. And we are, we are like Jacob. That's why he, he coins us in, that, in that, uh, that terminology. Because he knows how we are. But yet the other name on the other side of that coin is Israel. Governed by God. God is still our, the one that leads and guides us. But he knows that we are individuals. And though God will give us the power to go through, we always try to figure it out ourselves. That's what the trickster and the heel, heel catcher, he's trying to find ways to manipulate and do it himself. So that speaks about even though you try to figure it all out yourself, 
God's going to do it for you. You get frustrated because the things you try to do don't work. But that's okay because God's going to figure it out for you. You figured, you thought I got this figured out and it, it didn't work exactly the way you wanted it to. That's okay. Because God's going to give it to you exactly the way you want. You're going to get your inheritance. You're going to get what it is that you need. Even though you try to do all that stuff using the methods of Jacob. But he says, I still love you. What does that mean? Well, what does the other scripture say? God loved us while we were yet sinners. While we were yet sinners, he loved us. And so why? Because we, he knows we're, we're, we're Jacob's. And we're going to get frustrated. I'm not talking about brash, hateful, killing sinners. I'm talking about people that just don't, you, you're having struggles understanding what God's going on. You get confused. Why? Because God is mysterious and terrible and, and deep. And we don't get them. And we get frustrated because we can't figure it out. And we want to know what's happening. And God's saying, that's okay. Just let me be Lord. And you just have faith. And when it's all said and done, you're going to get exactly what it is that you, look, which, that you were looking for. You will be satisfied. And when I read that, I go, wow. Okay, Wayne, calm down. You will be satisfied. You're, you're going to be so happy that you held on, that you held out, that you were holding on to the things of God. You're going to be so gratified about that. And, and it's a shame that sometimes you wanted to question and, and, and wonder what else could I have done. No, just trust Jesus. All right? So we paused and we thought about that. Let's keep going now. Verse 5. God is going up with a shout. Now look at this. We already shouting. We already lifting our voice. We already uh, singing and blowing the trumpets. But look what happens. God joins us. God is going up with a shout. The Lord with the sound of a trumpet. See, we hear about the, the angels and, the, and even the scene of, of the redeemed. But we also forget that sometimes the scripture talks about the trump of God. The voice of God. Um, in Thessalonians it said, for we, sh uh, we know that we shall not all die, but we shall all be changed for the, the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with the shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God. That's the, that's the sound that will bring us into his presence. That's the beginning of the rapture of the calling up. And so when God, uh, uh sings, when God, I mean, you, 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 you know, when you're listening to some good old um, people that can sing, you know, I mean, I'm old school, so excuse me. But when you go back and you listen to, you know, uh, 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 Aretha Franklin, you're listening to uh, you know, Lena Horne, you're listening to Barry White, you, you, you're listening to, you know, what's that, uh, uh some of these old, good old songs, you know, uh, Marvin Gaye. I mean, you sit there in your quiet time, you know, you're sitting there with your friend or your significant other, and you're just enjoying the, ooh, that music just makes you feel good. You're just like, man, boy, these people can sing. You know, and then sometimes you get that good old, that, that good old party music, that dance music, and everybody's popping and hopping and jumping, and you're like, ooh, you just start feeling like you want to do your little wiggle jiggle, whatever it is. And the music just gets to you because that's what, what really gifted, talented people can do. But what about when God starts? Now, you're already clapping. You're already shouting. You done got your inheritance. You recognize what God, and then God stands up and he starts singing a song. <laughs> you're going to lose your mind. <laughs> I'm telling you, we are not going to be able to contain ourselves. It says that, that God's going to go up with a shout, the Lord with the sound of the trump. I, I mean, come on. This is just going to be beautiful. And then it's verse 6. It says, sing praises to God. So now, when we hear God sing, guess what we're going to want to do? We're going to... 
we're going to want to sing too. And all we're going to do is sing right back to him. We're going to give back to him what he has given to us. Sing praises to God. Sing praises. Sing praises unto our king. Sing praises. You're not going to be able to contain yourself. Now, I remember the first concert I went to. And I'm really going to date myself now. I went to a, a Parliament Funkadelic concert. Flashlight. You remember Flashlight? Dun, 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 dun. Remember that? Man, I was losing my mind. When they, when they got up on the stage and they were like, dun, 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 dun. I was like, yeah. Dun, dun, dun. And everybody, flashlight. Woo, we got a light. Stop. And you couldn't help yourself, man, because thousands and thousands and thousands of people, they got the music blasting. Well, that ain't even got anything to compare with when it comes down to what's going to happen when God starts singing. Because when he starts singing, everybody's going to be joining in. Woo! And God, you know how sometimes a good singer that everybody knows the song to, and they go back, and they, have to, and they sing, and they start the song, and then they hold the mic up for the audience to sing it? And the audience finishes it? That's what basically is happening. God's going to start, and then, he, then he's just going to hold out the mic for the rest for us. And it says, and sing praises unto God. Sing praises. Sing praises unto our King. Sing praises. Everybody's just gonna be like singing. Oh, go, just go, whatever the whatever verse God is singing, we're gonna sing it back to Him. It's just gonna be wonderful. This is what we have to look forward to, and this can just you can read this psalm and just lift yourself up. I can't wait. Now, draw an analogy. When you're getting ready to go on this wonderful trip, I don't know, you're going to Jamaica or maybe you went, you know, when a kid, when you were going to Disney World or wherever it was you were going, and you had the brochures and you had the pictures and you had the, and you just look at, ooh, I can't wait till I get there. I'm going to be going here and I'm going to be doing this. And this is going, ooh, I'm going to have such a good time. Or I'm going to be relaxing. And I'm going, whatever it is that you want to do. Well, that's what this psalm is showing us. This is the brochure. This is what we're going to do when we are, when we out there on that vacation with the Lord. But this is not a vacation. It's an eternal vacation. We're going to be there for eternity. And it's just showing you some of the things that you're going to be able to do. This is, I mean, you're going to be, we're going to be singing. We're going to have a concert in heaven and earth. A concert that's so big that both God, angels, and men will be singing. It's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. You think of any concert you ever went to, you think you had a good time? This, it, it, it's, this is going to be it right here. You're going, you're going to enjoy this. <clears throat> Look what he says. Verse 7. For God is the king of all the earth. Now, one of the reasons we're just going to, and I, that's a very short statement, but there's so much in that statement. Because what that means, that all the earth now has righteous guiding it. Nobody is feeling like they're being mistreated. There's no minority nor majority. The scripture says that in God there's neither male nor female. There's neither rich nor poor. There's neither Jew nor Gentile. So you're not going to feel inadequate in any way. You're not going to feel uh, less than in any sense. Instantly you, and, and I think somebody says, well how do, how do you know that? I think that's part of this is just me speaking, but I think part of that inheritance that you get is identity. The Bible says that you're going to be given, we're going to be given a new name, and that new name belongs to you and you only. But that new name will tell you who you are, and when you find out who you are from God's perspective, you're going to be blown away. I know I'm going to be blown away. That's what Scripture says. We're going to be like, "What? This is me? Wow, really? This is who I am? I mean, I'm nobody." I'm just a little guy that sits in the corner. I'm, you know, I don't make no noise. I'm, no, this is me. And you're, you're like, wow, Lord, this is, I can't believe this is, this is my inheritance. And so when you look at that, it speaks to all that, that has been given. We, we now see God as being such. And, and then after you thank God, then you turn to your, your friend next to you. You know, let's say we say uh, we're sitting here and we turn. 
Pat, did you see what God she said? I, I got, and then Pat was, like, yeah, but did, look at what God told me about me. And Wayne going to be like, well, but look at what God said about me. And Mary's going to be like, well, <laughs> well, look at what God said. And we, wow, look at, and you just, now you're blowing your mind because I see now not only what God said about me, but I also see what God said about Pat, what God said about Mary, what God said about Wayne Smith. And I'm like, the, all the earth. He's the God of all. Everybody is like, look at my inheritance. Look at verse 7. Read it again. Now see it for that light. For God is king of all the earth. Everybody is going to be so exalted and, 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 and lifted up in grateful thanksgiving. All right. Then what's going to happen when, when you do that? When you recognize all the earth got this. I got it. Pat got it. Mary got it. Wayne got it. Haywood got it. Everybody got it. The, all the earth got it. What do we do next? Sing ye praises with understanding. See, now I'm singing a praise, understanding what my inheritance actually means. And I see what your inheritance means. I understand what, wow. and now I'm not. Before I was singing out of just, I'm just glad and happy and do. But now I'm singing out of, I understand it. What, I get it, and now my mind is blown a second time. Wow. And what happens when you when you have that kind of overwhelming joy to hit you? Guess what you start doing again? Flashlight. Now we're singing again. You know, we're going to see, maybe not flashlight, God's light. Da, 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 da. I don't know what it is, man. We're just going to be singing again, right? The joy is going to be happening again. The concert's going to start all over again, all right? And, and it's like, wow. Now, that's, now I'm praising God with, with, with understanding. But guess what? It's not an understanding that comes to a conclusion. It speaks of an understanding that continues to grow. You understand, and when you understand this, then you understand that. Then when you understand that, you understand this. It becomes a domino, a, a never-ending domino effect of understanding. It's not, you just got to stop. I just got to stop for a moment. Well, what you going to do? I got to stop understanding and go back to singing <laughs> because this understanding is bringing so much to me. I just got to re rejoice and sing about the piece that I'm understanding now, and I'll go back to the dominoes of understanding a little bit later. Let me just do some more rejoicing and singing. This is, I'm telling you, this is going to be something. All right? What he goes on in verse 8. Look what it says. God reigneth over uh, the heathen. God sitteth upon the throne. Now, this right here, brings in the aspect that there are individuals that are heathen. And what is a heathen? Somebody that don't believe that God is who he say he is. But he's still going to be what? God of all of them. Um, it doesn't matter in this environment what somebody uh, thinks. Everybody is going to see God as who he is. Now, us, or as the scripture said earlier, ye people, us people, the believers, the church, the bride of Christ, we're going to be doing all this rejoicing. And guess who's going to be looking on? Understanding, ooh, we didn't get in. I can hear the concert, but I didn't get a ticket. Oh, I, they hear, I, hear, I can hear the music, but I wasn't able to get in. The bouncers at the door won't let me in. But guess what? He's still God of all of them. And so this is a little sober reminder of what's, what, what it is. But it also is an understanding, once again, for more rejoicing. Why? Because I could have been one of the heathen. I could have been one of them wishing I was in there, and I'm not. But I accepted the fact that I'm a Jacob, and a Jacob always recognizes I keep messing up 
I need God. I keep messing up, tripping up, falling down, doing the wrong thing. I need God because I can't do it myself. And therefore, you're going to get your ticket and you're going to get in and you're going to be part of this eternal uh, galactic spiritual concert, spiritual and natural concert that God's going to have. So it says, God reigneth over the heathen. God sitteth upon the throne of his holiness. All right. Now, once again, it speaks to that aspect about God. When it talks about God being holy, it brings to the, the, the attention that means there is no sin in him. And anything that has sin cannot be attached to him. We are attached to him, so attached that we're called the bride. Why? Because we were cleansed of all of our sin and made righteous by the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. And that's why we can be next to, next to God, that close to be where we were even called the bride, and God still be holy. Because when we're close to him, we are holy. All right? All right, so it talks about uh, God sitteth upon the throne of, of his holiness. He will always be holy. He will never lose his ability to be perfect. To be completely without sin. Right? Even when he brings us in, he will still be without sin. Why? Because he washes us in the blood of the Lamb. All right? So we're, 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 this is a sense of appreciation. We're still all you know, thankful. Right? This is when, you know, back in the concert when they sing, you know, the, 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 but then every now and then they get that little slow song that kind of calms the crowd down. This is one of those you're going to be, wow, you know what? I, I'm, I need to just thank God I'm here. Let me just, you know what, I'm, I'm, I'm jumping all over the place and everything. But let me just, you know what, God, I'm just, wow, I'm just thankful. As holy as you are, I'm here. I'm thankful. And we just, we slow the music down. We're still singing. We're just singing that little ballad song now. Rejoicing. Lord, I'm not, I'm not a lost heathen. But I'm able to be in the presence of your holiness. We're given that thankful thought, that thankful song. All right, verse 9. The princes of the people are gathered together. All right. So we are going to be called a, uh, a, a holy people. Um, we are going to be called um, the, uh, the bride of Christ. We're going to have many titles. Uh, that word, the princess, could mean a variety of things. It could mean the, the, the apostles. It could mean the, um, the leaders of the tribes of Israel, which I don't kind of think, I think they're going to be uh, called something else. But to be honest with you, um, I don't know, I, I'm not dogmatic about when it says princess, what specific specific group is talking about uh it certainly could mean us because we're called out um to be a special uh uh, 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 uh people to god as being the bride of christ but it could mean the apostles it could mean uh the uh, the uh the, the leaders of the tribes of israel it could mean a variety of things but whatever it means look at what it says about the princes the princes of the people are gathered together, even the people of God, the, uh, of the God of Abraham. All right. And so what that basically means is the promise that God made initially to, to Abraham, that his descendants would be as the stars of the sky and the sands of the sea. You won't be able to number them. That's how big this concert is going to be. So we're going to have heads there, but we're also going to have all the people of God. It says the princes are gathered together and even, and so in other words, that you can use the word even as an, a way of saying uh, as well or also the people of God. So regardless as the princes would speak to us, they're going to be there. But regardless of which way you look as to who the princes are, 
the bottom line it says uh it says are gathered together even the people of god the people of the god of abraham all right so even the people of the god of abraham so that speaks to us all right to anybody that follows the lord now some people will say well that's especially speaking to the jews and i think that's probably uh true i think they will definitely be there god has not forgotten the jewish people he is the jewish people are god's chosen people and regardless of what kind of uh mistakes they made because they are part of jacob too all right and they're going to do stuff that's, that's that's you know they're trying to fix it and do it themselves and they're going to make mistakes and do things wrong they're still god's people they're going to be there too but it also speaks to us because we're part of that. Why? Because the Bible says that when he taught, when Jesus talked to the Pharisees, and the Pharisees said, "We are of Abraham's seed," and Jesus said to the Pharisees, "If you were of Abraham's seed, get this," he said, "You would listen to me." He said, "But I will tell you of whose seed you are. You are of your father is the devil." So he recognized that even though from a natural standpoint, their seed came from Abraham, it was transformed into that which is no longer attached to Abraham. Now, why? Because their inheritance was, was, was uh, uh, nullified and made null and void. The scripture talks about your name being blotted out from the book of life. And then it speaks about us, the church, as being grafted in. So that's why I say we are still part of Abraham, as well as the Jewish people. Right? He is Abraham is described as the father of faith, and without faith, it is impossible to please God. All right. So it says, and just to read all this together as we finish up this last um, verse here. It says the princes of the people are gathered together, even the people of the God of Abraham. For the shields of the earth belong unto God. Now, look at this. The shields. What is the shield for? Protection. It covers. It keeps you from what? Harm. All right. Now, what we got to also keep in mind is that when God comes back and this happens, at this particular point while we're rejoicing, Satan is still not cast into the lake of fire. He's still going about trying to cause havoc. But while we're doing and worshiping and praising, guess what God's doing? Protecting us. His shields are always there. Whether we're here or there. Now or then. We still rely on the protection. So what does this tell me? It lets me know there will never be a time when I don't need God. Some people think, if I can just get to heaven, I can do my thing. No, 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 no. Even in heaven, you're going to need God. That's the point that sometimes people miss. They think, well, if I get to heaven, then I'm good. I don't, you know, and plus there won't be no devil, you know, eventually. I, I you know, when he gets thrown into the lake of fire, uh, he won't be able to 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 trick us and, and and set traps for us and everything that's true but you're still going to need god and you say why then why would i need god and my answer to you is i don't know but i can't think of anything that could make me ever think that well i've gotten to a point where i no longer need god i think that might be, and I use the word might, my own little opinion here, be what got into the brain of Satan. There's nothing bad in, in heaven. Why do we even need God? I can be whatever I want to be. He broke away. So even in eternity, when we're under the protection of God, we always still need to recognize we still need him. Right? We can be, we're going to be angelic like in as far as our eternity the bible says we will be like the angels neither marrying nor giving in marriage um but we're still going to need god for eternity 
And so one of the things I think we should make sure that we pull from this and all the rejoicing that this psalm talks about, all the, the singing and all the glad clapping and rejoicing that's going to be happening in eternity, we need to recognize we are going to need him forever. We always are going to be rejoicing and thanking God for him being God. All right? And we never can uh, get the feeling that I can be independent of God. That's a, th that's a problem. And I, I would guess my own, my own weak opinion is that's probably what happened to Satan. All right? um, so he is the shield of all the earth, belongs unto God. He is greatly exalted. God will always be lifted up. He will always be above us. And we got to make sure that we never forget that. All right. We're going to stop here. Uh, any other comments or questions about what we talked about?